What's up guys? Genius Pie Trap. And this is the Steam Controller video tutorial. We're going to go through what's in the box, how to hook it up, how to put the batteries in, how to take them out, how to set up the controller on the PC, all the software, everything from start to finish. Let's get right into it. Right so you're in the box, we will open it up. And right on top we have the Steam Controller. Looks like so. We also have a set of Duracell AA batteries. A USB, wireless USB dongle, I guess. If we open up the this, we have some product guide, things like that. Things you won't need because you're watching this video. And in this box here, we have a little adapter and a cord. Now, basically, this cord is for the dongle. We can select it, put it in right like this. You can either just plug this directly into your PC and it will work, or if you want to extend it, you can use this adapter by simply plugging it on the top and using the cord right here, plugging it in, plugging it into your PC. So nice little dongle. So very simple, you plug it in. Um, let's look at the back to the controller here. <clears throat> if we turn it around, it's got a little slider on the bottom here. We'll open up this cap. All right, now to install the batteries, I like to use the two double A's. I got a couple of rechargeables here. And basically wanna go in like so. Now these go in pretty hard. That's what she said? No, I don't know. And basically you just wanna give it a good amount of pressure here, like so, and they pop right in. There's also a slide up. We can slide this up and they pop out just like that. So let's put them both into here. And the cap, the little door here slides back in. And it's just simple push, it's right there. There we go. All right, if we give the controller a quick press, if you guys can see it, it's flashing. That means that there's no connection to the USB dongle because we don't even have it plugged in right now. But that's what it's meaning. If it's solid on, that means it's connected and it turns off. If we want to turn it off, we simply just hold the button down and it'll turn off. It'll turn the controller off. And that's pretty much all we need to know about the controller. Let's go and hook up all the software and see how to configure, actually configure the controller. All right, first thing we want to do is making sure we have Steam all updated. First thing we can do is up here in the upper left hand corner, we're going to click Steam and then we're going to go to check for Steam client updates. It's going to run this. It says your Steam client is already up to date or there might be an update and it'll update. Secondly, we're going to go in here again and go into settings. And then right here in the middle, it's going to say beta participation, Steam beta update. This will make sure, especially with the Steam controller being so new, that we absolutely have all the latest Steam controller updates. So we want to kick, click change and make sure that this is selected Steam Beta Update. You might have it saying none. We want to change it to Steam Beta Update. Click OK. Click OK. After that, you probably want to start restart Steam. And simply just Xing out of this like this will not be good enough. You want to actually go into this Dropbox, click right here, right click, and click Exit. And then we just want to restart Steam. If you don't have the latest beta update, then you'll get something like this where it'll ask you to restart again. This will pop up, and it'll tell you the changes. But this will make sure that we have the latest software update. And restart. And there we have it, the latest version of Steam. 
and we might get a pop-up giving us a friendly reminder to use big picture mode which is especially helpful when gaming on a big screen and it's just basically telling us to enter big picture mode we can click this little controller icon right in our upper right hand corner or you can hit the middle button on the steam controller so let's go do that let's go ahead and go into big picture mode let's go ahead and turn on our controller we're going to hold the button a little bit we get that little beep the controller is detected not ready to use you might not get that at first that's okay we're going to i'm going to use my mouse right now i'm going to click this little cog right here <clears throat> And I'm going to go to controller right here in the very middle. And add a steam controller. And this press X and hold X button while powering on your steam controller. And I'll do that. I'll hold X. It's going to say enter validation code. All I do is simply input the buttons that it says on the screen. A, Y, A, A. Validation succeeded. Your Steam controller is ready. Hoorah. Now, you may not even have to do that. So a lot of times, it just automatically detects the controller. All right. So now, if we... Now, by now, our, our Steam controller should be working. We should be able to control, which I'm doing this with my controller. Everything should be fine. But let's go right here where it says Detect a Controller, Steam Controller. And go to support and we got this screen this we can basically tell if all of our buttons are working is pretty much the only thing to it if i lightly touch on here i can see exactly how the inputs work i can move this around i can hit the buttons it'll show everything should be working correctly here we'll even give a little um how much pressure I am if I there's a little click in the trigger so if I hit it all the way down it, it, you can feel a click that's like maximum I slowly let it down like this the bumpers and we also got these ones on the bottom here all right everything seems to be working a okay let's hold the back button if I hit the A button to identify, I just get this little beeping noise from my controller. It's curious. Here's something interesting. I can use my mouse to hit identify, and it'll make my controller beep, which might be handy if you lost your controller in your couch cushion, or you set it down because you had to go grab some chips or a beer or soda or whatever. I wish like remotes had that. That's nice. All right, let's really configure the controller. For this next part, you need to be in big picture mode. So make sure you're in this mode. And let's go to our library. We want to launch any game. Um, let's go with Mad Max here. All right, while in game, and remember, we launched in big picture mode, I'm going to hit the middle Steam logo button on the controller. And we get this overlay, and then I'm going to select Configure Controller and hit the A button. And we come up with this controller configuration screen. From here we can do a lot of different options, a lot of different things. Very, very customizable. For example, if we click on the left trigger here, we can change the trigger style, like put a hair trigger, a simple threshold, hip fire aggressive, a bunch of different things with very good explanation which each thing does we can adjust the pull point the trigger range end, the trigger start a lot of different stuff here's where we adjust the haptic intensity which is kind of the feedback of the trigger if we let's see what else we got here we can go to the face buttons here we can do a style of button, whether we want it to work as a directional pad, a mouse, a scroll wheel. We can even adjust to have a turbo going on in here, like very old school. Alright, let's go in the left D-pad that's currently set up. But we can change that from a directional pad into a button pad, into a joystick move. We can make it act like a mouse for like, say, like a twin stick shooter, stuff like that. Same with the right 
circle pad. We can change, same type of thing. Bring here, we can make that a directional pad or a button pad, or make it act like a mouse. Here also is the haptics intensity. That's like the feedback of the pad again. We'll have it on low, we can just see it feel a slight. We can turn it off, turn it to medium, turn it to high. Now, let me, let me just point something out. We'll go back in game here. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear this. There's a slight static noise. We'll go back and we'll turn that, let's turn that up to all the way up to high. I don't know if you guys can hear that, that's the, the feedback in there rumbling around. That is completely normal. Again, this can be turned on or turned off. It, it gives a slight, a very slight feedback to your finger as it glides around there. It's pretty neat stuff. Again, adjust it to your liking. And when, once we save everything the way we want, we'll hit Y, save as. You can put different... Um, your what it is and you can mark it private or public what public means is then you share it in the workshop so other people can use your controller configurations so if we hit the X button to browse configs from here we just have recommended personal these are ones that you saved community these are ones that people have made that have uploaded, made, that can you can then check out and see their templates. Here we have templates that are built in, gamepad, this one works very much like a mouse and keyboard, it actually works really good from what I found, and gamepad with high precision game. Lots of different stuff to check out. I can't really tell you guys what's the best because it's going to be different for everyone, but all that I recommend is for you to check it all out and experiment and play with it yourself. All right, guys, another quick tip. If you want to take a picture, all you have to do is hit the middle Steam logo button and the right trigger at the same time. And there we go. Screenshot taken. And with that, I'm out. If you guys got any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. Genius Pie Trap, over and out. Later. Bye. Victory. The outcome was never really in doubt. Eat my dust! Let's have a go at it! Godspeed, you magnificent bastard! Giddy up! It is good day to be giant man! Guts and glory, lads! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am credit! <laughs>